Okay, so hi everyone. Um, thanks again for joining our information session today about study abroad in global education, otherwise known as SAGE at Scripps. My name is Jachi Yin and I'm an assistant director of admission at Scripps. I'm also a graduate from the class of 2016 and I did study abroad in Copenhagen in the spring of my junior year. Um, today I'm joined by Neva Barker, who is the director of SAGE and current students who have also participated in a study abroad program. The purpose of the session is for you to learn about the study abroad program and opportunities at Scripps. I want to make sure that we have enough time for Neva and our current students to share their personal experiences. Before, but before I turn this over to them, I want to highlight a few logistical things about how the session will work. So the session will last about 50 minutes, and at any point during the session, you can ask a question. You can do so by typing it in the Q&A function instead of the chat. Lastly, we will be recording the session, so if you have to leave at any point, um, you can always refer back to this recording, and we'll be sending this link out in a follow-up email. So with that said, I'll turn it over to you, Neva. Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I want to get directly to the students very quickly because they have the best part of all of this, the stories and their experiences. But I did want to give you a few facts about study abroad at Scripps. It's something that um, pre-pandemic we had um, about 60% of every graduating class would have participated in a semester or year long study away experience. So we're very proud of our participation rate. It's something that um, it's not required that you do. It's not expected that you do it, but if you do wanna do it, there's a lot of support for that. Everyone would pay Scripps tuition room and board. And out of that, we cover your tuition, your housing, your uh, meals, round trip airfare, insurance. So those expenses are covered as part of the, what you pay to Scripps. And we work with programs around the world. We have over 110 or 115 approved programs that are already on our list. Um, most people go abroad as juniors. You apply in sophomore year to go abroad in junior year, like fall and sophomore year to go abroad fall junior year, et cetera. And let's see, what else do you need to know? Oh, financial aid all applies to your experience. So every all your grants and scholarships can um, be transferred to your um, experience abroad with the exception of work study, but there are ways to work around that. And um, veterans benefits are provided only for US experiences. We say study abroad, but we do have domestic programs as well. So um, without further ado, I want to go ahead and have the students introduce themselves. And we're going to start with Blake. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you could make it. Um, my name is Blake Jeremy. I'm a senior here at Scripps. I am a classical literature and languages major. Um, and I studied abroad in Athens, Greece, with the program College Year in Athens. Uh, and there I studied ancient Greek and modern Greek. Um, and I was in a, I'd never spoken modern Greek before. So I was in an accelerated modern Greek course for people who were already familiar with ancient Greek. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexis. Um, I'm also a senior at Scripps. Um, I went, I studied in Barcelona, Spain, and my major is in politics. So there I studied with IES abroad and did their politics and international relations program. Um, I had already taken four semesters of um, college and high school level Spanish. So I was already conversational. And when I went there, it was definitely necessary, but I also still took a class there to get me more integrated into the um, different uh, Catalan um, dialects in Barcelona. Um, my name is Eva and I studied, I'm a senior at Scripps and I studied abroad in Tanzania. Um, the program was like an ecology program and I'm a human bio major. So um, a few of the classes counted, but most of them were just for fun. And the language there was Swahili um, and we studied it and no one had any background in that. That was like a class that we took. Um, yeah, while we were there. 
I want to say it was for fun, but they were courses for credit she took for fun. <laughs> yeah, they definitely could have counted. They just for, for other majors. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bianca. I'm also a senior at Scripps. I'm a bio biology major on the pre-med track, and I studied in Amsterdam in the Netherlands through IES. Um, we didn't have a language requirement, um, but we did take a Dutch class for credit while in Amsterdam. And I studied at a local Dutch university through um, and did their programs like biomedical science and ecology. And I took global health classes as well. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Petey. I'm a senior at Scripps. And last fall, I studied abroad in Barcelona, Spain. Um, and I did that through Brown University study abroad program. Um, I'm a senior and I'm majoring in foreign languages, so I mostly study Spanish, Italian, Latin, and Swahili, but while I was in Barcelona, I was able to study a bit of Romanian Catalan, um, and I think I studied Spanish for about seven or eight years before going abroad, but it's definitely not required to study it that long to have a successful semester abroad. Thank you. So you can see a wide range of majors. Um, this is something that is possible for all majors to do. Um, someone in the STEM fields may have to, to plan a little bit more ahead of time, but um, actually uh, in several years, almost um, one fifth to a third of our students who participated on study abroad are in STEM majors. So it's not a, a hindrance to going abroad and even pre-med can make it happen as Bianca's testament to. Um, next, I want the students to describe to you their academics that they participated in, their courses, if they had a favorite class, um, which things were they used to count towards requirements. And just so you know, everything you take potentially can count towards the courses you need for graduation. Some things may be allowed to count for a general ed requirement, some things may count for a major, some may count for a minor, but students have been able to arrange their schedule around other semesters and take more of just their graduation electives as well. So it, it's all something that will progress you to graduation, um, but the way people do it, it varies by person and by program and by their own choices. So um, we'll have um, Alexis go first on that one. Yeah, so as I said, I'm a politics major. Um, I went abroad last semester, so I was a first semester senior when I went abroad, and I was at the last stages of my major. So I took one course, a media and politics course in Barcelona, which did count towards my major. I asked my advisor if I could count more towards my major if I wanted, and they said that was possible. So like two or three could count towards a politics major if you get um, the permission to. Um, and then I had already completed all my GE, so I didn't need to do that. So all of my other courses were like my Spanish course and then courses towards graduation for credit. Um, I did take one course, it was a marketing and fashion course that didn't count for credit, but because I had enough courses to graduate without it, I was willing to take that. Um, and I took that at the local university in Barcelona and the other courses I took with the IES abroad program specifically. Um, yeah, I think that uh, my favorite courses were definitely my politics one. And also I took a food as an expression of culture class in Barcelona, which um, had the uh, requirement of like doing like a food service and working with like the homeless in Barcelona. So that was really fun and really engaging. That's wonderful. Um, for me, uh, most of my classes, actually all of the classes that I took were relevant to my major, so they counted towards that. Um, I chose my program because it really catered to my major. However, I had a lot of friends who attended CYA um, in Athens who were pre-med um, or politics majors or econ majors. Um, so take that as you will. Uh, my favorite class that I took was called Ancient Aegean Art and Archaeology. And that class was really special because it was a site-based class. Um, so I think we met in the classroom two or three times the entire semester. Every other time we were responsible as students for getting ourselves to various locations around Athens and then meeting up with my professor and going through class and learning about these sites while we were actually on the sites. And that was just 
a life-changing experience. And Seaway goes on several sponsored trips throughout the semester. And uh, my class was grouped into our class throughout our travels because we got to actually have a few special lectures on the sites around Greece that we got to visit with CY as a whole. So that was a really unique experience and I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. Bianca? Um, yes, I chose Amsterdam because like I said, I'm a biology major and I found it that it would be easiest for me to choose a program where I could work a lot of my classes towards my major. So I took three classes towards my major. Um, another thing that I needed was to go somewhere that didn't have a language requirement because I placed out of languages at Scripps through my exams from high school. So I didn't take a language while I was at Scripps. Um, so Amsterdam was perfect for me because I was able to take classes in the biomedical sciences, like I said, and global health, um, which counted towards my pre-med requirements and also towards um, my graduation requirements. Um, one thing I would say is to, for bio majors, you have to speak with um, Elise Faree, and I think doing that like super ahead of time was really helpful. So when you're there, you sign up for classes and you know what's going to count. Um, so I actually took all of my classes at the local university called the FU, and each of our classes were worth 0.75 credits. So we took five classes total, and we actually split it between you take a couple classes for two months and then the rest for two months so it's like block scheduling which is nice because you don't have to worry about too many classes at once um I found that the classes were generally like self-taught a little bit and had like mandatory group sessions so a lot of like lab and group work and I had two favorite classes I think I really enjoyed learning Dutch because um it was fun and I got to learn about the culture um but I also really enjoyed my global health class that I took um, which was about disability um, because I got to work closely with the community in Amsterdam. We worked at a local park, um, which was helpful in getting to know more about like Dutch way of life. And also I got to work with Dutch students really closely. So um, it was nice to make Dutch friends and it helped me navigate Amsterdam better. Um, so I chose my specific program in Spain because as a foreign languages major, I really wanted an immersive Spanish experience and a really a really challenging program, which I did get. Um, so the program that I did was completely immersive. You enroll in directly at the university for all of your classes and you have the, the choice to enroll at different universities in Barcelona. Um, and then you can either do an internship or a research project with a professor. So I did the latter. I did a research project with a history professor at my university, which is really cool. Um, my classes, the classes that I took were anthropology, history, Romanian, and Latin literature. Um, and then we also had a pro seminar that was about Catalonian history and culture and a bit of Catalan language. Um, I counted two of my classes towards my major. I was I'm like, I wasn't needing to cram a bunch of classes in, so two was totally fine for me. Um, and my favorite class was definitely Romanian. I'd self-studied it a bit before, but there aren't really learning opportunities in the United States like there are in Europe for Romanian. And it was also really fun because it was taught in Spanish. So it was, it was a foreign language nerd's dream to study a language in a foreign language. It was really fun. Cool. Um, and I, my program was an ecology program and um, SIT, they're pretty like hands-on. So most of my classes, um, we had like a wildlife and resource management class and like a tropical ecology class or marine biology class and research methods and stuff like that. And we um, were learning Swahili just by like going to the markets and the restaurants and chatting with people. So it was a good time. Um, lots of our classes, we just, like we're out camping um or like doing just like working with like coral reefs and doing research like that so that that was what my final project was which that was the one class I needed to count for my major um so that was a lot of fun just like seeing kind of the nitty-gritty side of science and yeah thank you um 
So housing and meals are covered by scripts. Um, it varies by location as um, um, so it depends on where you're going, how that works. And um, I want to have Eva start because she had um, the most unusual probably, but homestays were a lot more common um, before the pandemic. They're still um, offering that in some places, it just depends, but programs have made some changes to um, mitigate for COVID um, issues. So um, there aren't as many home states, but they're coming back online um, at coming up. So that's great. But I'll have Eva describe her, how she did her housing and meals. Um, yeah, so I studied abroad kind of like during a peak in the pandemic, like in the beginning. Um, so there were lots of like COVID measures taken. So we didn't stay with homestays. We stayed at like hotels. Um, yeah, with like our whole program, basically. It was a pretty small program, just like eight people. So we just stayed in like a few rooms, basically. Um, and we had food provided for us all the time, um, basically. So yeah, and then once we, I think it just depends by program, but ours was built in to give us like a stipend eventually. So um, that was nice not to have to rely on the program for food and just be able to go out. Okay. Um, so I lived in a student residence for international students in Barcelona that came from all around the world. Um, I did have to get my own groceries and cook my own food, which was covered by my script stipend. I originally was not looking forward to cooking my own food because I don't know, I, I, I didn't want to have to do it. I, I was lazy, but um, I actually, I really enjoyed it at the end. It was nice to cook. And then um, I became really good friends with the people in my residence. So it was nice to cook with all of them together. Um, and I'm still friends with a lot of them today and they come from all around the world. So it's really fun. Um, my residence was in a really convenient spot. It was right next to the Metro station. Um, and it was about a six or seven minute Metro ride from the center of Barcelona. Um, and I did, I personally had an hour commute to my classes. I had to take the Metro and the train, but that was entirely my own choice because I had the opportunity to choose from four different universities in Barcelona. And I chose to go to the farthest because I liked the classes there the most. Um, but most students studied at the university in the center. So it was like a 10 minute walk and metro ride total. So I lived in also like a student accommodation. It was called the student experience. And about there was about 50 people in my program with IES and about 20 of us lived there. We all lived on the same floor so that like we could make friends with other people on our program. Um, and we had our own studio apartments as well with kitchenettes and we had our own bathroom. So meals were on your own. Um, and we found Amsterdam to be quite expensive. So um, at first we were eating out a lot, but then we found that we had a stipend from Scripps. So the best use of the money was to buy your own food to cook. And I think this was nice also, like Petey was saying, and for me, because, um, Sometimes you miss foods in the U.S. that you wouldn't be able to maybe find um, in Amsterdam specifically, but I could cook them on my own. So I also got to do that as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, the student accommodation was nice also because there was a bunch of other exchange students from other countries, mostly in Europe, that were going to be living there for a year. So, um, like you said, we got to meet a lot of different people and still see those people like on social media. So it's um, it's definitely nice to make those connections. I think I was in a really small program, uh, 50 people, but it was just felt, felt pretty small, but we were all American. So a lot of my immediate friends were all American. So it was nice to live somewhere where there was Europeans and to like get to know other people. Um, my accommodation was kind of built up in a place that I think is like up and coming in Amsterdam, but not there yet so it wasn't the most convenient location but I really liked it but it, it the commute was like 50 55 minutes to school also depending on what time of day you go um we only had a bus stop at my accommodation which I know the other accommodation where other students were had a metro a light rail and a bus stop so um not great but um 
it's super easy. You just take a bus to a metro and you can use your phone to like look at directions. So I never really had a problem with that. And um, I do think Amsterdam was a bit more expensive to travel than um, I know other places. We had to pay about like a hundred a month, I think for our metro. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. And it says a local dish that you liked um people really love the mayo and fries in Amsterdam I got sick of it quite fast but the mayo and Dutch mayonnaise is actually really sweet so if you ever go you should try it nice um <laughs> I actually have tried it it's not my favorite either but some people love it um okay so my housing arrangement um with CYA uh was an apartment where, um, so basically at CY, students live in just regular apartments. Um, so like my next door neighbors were just Greek old men um, and families and all that. Um, however, they, there are typically, at le there is at least like one other apartment full of CY students in every building. That way you're not like totally isolated. Uh, and it's in a neighborhood called Sangrati, which is in Athens proper. And most people, at the most, um, the apart the furthest apartment was I think like a 12 minute walk from campus. Uh, so pretty close and all pretty tight knit within the little community. Um, for meals, CY provides uh, lunch every day. So that was a really nice way to just check in with my friends and know that I could rely on like steady meal and you could eat as much as you wanted. And it was really nice. Um, otherwise we mostly just cooked our own food. However, food in Athens, everything in Athens is pretty cheap. Sorry to, to Bianca. Um, but, so it was, it was also really accessible to just pick up like a Yido here and there or um, something like that. Our favorite local spot was called Kekos. It was just a small cafe. They were open at all hours and run by really reliable, lovely people. So you could always just stop in there if you ever needed anything. Overall, pretty, pretty well contained and pretty easily accessible. Yeah, so for my um, housing situation, I did also live in an apartment. I lived in an apartment with um, two other IES students. And I know that there was um, a lot of different stays, ways for people to stay in Barcelona. So people were in apartments or um, uh, dorms and it was random. Um, usually with IES, they, it would have been a homestay, but because of COVID, they just like randomly put everyone in either an apartment or in a dorm. Um, and my apartment was located at the center of the city. So I was like a 10 minute walk from the IES um, campus. Um, so like my commute wasn't long at all, but when I went to my other university, it was like a 25 minute commute through the Metro. So I took the Metro, there's a stop right by my apartment um, and the metro ticket was really, really cheap. Like um, for three months, it was 90 euros, which is like, I guess like a hundred dollars ish. Um, so like you pay that one fee and you're good for the rest of your stay. Um, meals, we were on our own if you were in an apartment, but if you were in the student dorms, you had your meals provided. Um, so for us, yeah, there was a lot of cooking, grocery shopping, but um, the program set us up really nicely with um, a department store that like had like a grocery store and all the other essentials that you might need comparable to like a Macy's, I guess. Um, yeah, um, because I was in the center of the city, I had a lot of like really good options, cafes for food. Um, and it was a little more expensive just because it was the center, but if you were like a little farther out, it would be like cheaper and um, more cost-effective, yeah. Thank you. Um, we are going to have two more questions that we go through like this, and we will leave time for questions at the end. So I just want to assure people I'm seeing some um, questions that I will get to um, then. But next, we're going to talk about um, health and safety issues, about um, whether people felt safe, how that worked, um, and any information in that area. So we're starting with Bianca. Um, yes. Yeah, so first with safety, I felt extremely safe in Amsterdam. Um, I think I never had any issues. Um, things closed quite early, like at midnight when we were there because of COVID. So um, we were, I was never out like too late and I um, traveled with my friends. So I always felt really safe 
in Amsterdam. Um, as for health, I I needed allergy shots abroad, which I was unable to do um, because I didn't do it ahead enough with enough time. So I would suggest that if you have something that you need um, abroad, I do think it's possible, but I think that um, doing that with like a couple months um, before your arrival would be good. I tried to do mine like three weeks ahead and it, it wasn't enough time. But if you do have something that you need in your in the country you're going to, I found that my program was really helpful. So I just talked with IES and they have people there in the Netherlands that are like very familiar with people um, needing different things like medical things. So um, they were quite helpful with that. Um, I did have to go to the doctor at one point, which was free for me. Um, I found that the like Dutch society was like very organized and efficient. So you never really had to worry about waiting in lines and um, or anything like that. Cause I know that that can be a, like kind of common here. Um, I did go during this past fall. So I think going during COVID really probably does change your experience when it comes to health and like um, interacting with like doctors and whatnot. So um, one thing to make me feel that did make me feel safer was that if you needed, if you wanted to go out and um, to like events in Amsterdam, you needed to have, or even if you wanted to go to a cafe events, um, if you wanted to go on the canals, on boats, anything, you need to have uh, your vaccine code. And that was a bit hard to get because we had to travel to a different city since we were American and had like an American um, vaccination card. We had to get it transferred to a European one. But like I said, your program helps you with all of that. They tell you exactly where you need to go and you make an appointment. And it's very easy. Um, and having tests was also a, like a thing that we needed to do a lot there. If you wanted to go to a specific event or a restaurant, they might require like a negative test result. But I also found that that was quite easy in Amsterdam because like every two miles, there's another testing center with a bunch of um, appointments. So that was never too hard for me. Um, I do think that for safety, like health wise during um, the pandemic, uh, it did like, I was pretty assured by the higher vaccination rate in the Netherlands. Um, I think they were like at around 90%. So when we got there, things were pretty, felt pretty safe. Um, I didn't know anyone in my friend group that got COVID. So that was also like a pretty, I think we had a pretty good experience in that way. We did have to go through a lockdown, which was not great at the end, but we had already all made friends. So that was um, pretty good. But like I said, I think that um, when you, if you have anything, I would really just try to talk to like maybe Neva and the people at your abroad center and they're there to help you. So I found that really helpful. Um, so yeah, like Bianca, I also felt pretty safe when I was abroad. Spain in general is quite safe. Um, you know, there's some kind of petty theft and pickpocketing not a bunch of major crime in Spain, um, as long as you're not, you know, in the, the middle of Barcelona and in a large group speaking loudly in English, you're not gonna get pickpocketed. Don't do that. Um, I was not pickpocketed, somebody attempted and I caught them and started yelling at them, um, but don't do that. Um, otherwise, I mean, you're not really gonna have a lot of problems probably in Spain, it's a very safe country. Um, my study abroad program really prepared us um, in the case of an emergency. So they gave us all their contact info, embassy info. Um, they told us kind of about like the, the 911 equivalent in Spain um, and gave us emergency contact info. Um, so we felt very safe and prepared. They gave us a little card to like keep in our wallet. Um, so that was great. Um, Spaniards do take COVID really seriously. Um, same like as Bianca said, the 90, 90 something percent of Spaniards are vaccinated against COVID-19 um, and everyone wears their masks and I mean everywhere. It's not, it's not um, a problem to see people without masks. So I did feel very safe regarding COVID. Um, Spain did have COVID largely controlled kind of until the very end of the end of the semester when I went. Um, starting in November when the Omicron variant arrived in Spain, um, it started to pick up again. Um, and I did actually end up getting COVID myself a few days before I was supposed to return to the United States. 
Um, but I will say that I felt really, really supported by both SAGE and my study abroad program. They were really helpful in making sure that I was feeling okay. Like I would get a text every day from my program. How are you feeling? Can we get you anything? Um, SAGE was really on it um, with helping me purchase a new flight back to the US. So as soon as I was testing negative and had recovered and could safely come home, um, I was on a plane literally the very next morning. Um, so that was great. And I, I even got an email, I remember from Neva um, because I was missing Christmas with my with my family, just a, a really nice email saying, um, I'm sorry this happened, but just want to say happy holidays and hope you're feeling better. So I, I felt very supported. Um, and yeah, I'm back. So health, healthy and safe. Um, all right. So when I was in Greece, um, oh. I think you froze. Can we move on to the next person and then maybe she will unfreeze in a minute? Okay, yeah. Um, okay, health and safety. Um, so I, like I said, I lived in the center of Barcelona and where I lived was next to a city called like, or a neighborhood called El Raval, which people will be like, oh, like that's kind of like the bad part. But like in comparison to like in the US, it's really, really not. Like I would just say, obviously be careful when you're walking at night, you know, have a buddy system, like typical things you would do that in the US, just like have that same like common sense when you're abroad. Um, uh yeah pickpocketing is an issue some people in our program they get pickpocketed um but the uh program is really helpful with like trying to get get you in contact with the police and like kind of get you set back up for the things that you lost um so yeah just like keep an eye on like you know your bags everything and if you are in barcelona your program will definitely like tell you all these things and get you acquainted with just how to um be safe in public and on public transportation. Um, yeah, masks are worn all on public transportation. It's not really like a debate over there. It's just like the normal thing. And um, I didn't get COVID, but like a couple people got COVID during the last stint of our experience and the program let us all know, made us aware like exactly what was happening. And they gave us access to like where we could get tested, things like that. Um, if you were a close contact. Um, the only thing with Spain is when you do have, um, you do have to pay for COVID tests and they are pretty expensive. Um, so that would be one thing I would say. Okay, we'll go back to you, Blake, and then Eva. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Awesome, okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so with regarding to health, uh, I studied abroad in 2019 in the fall. Um, so that was before the COVID pandemic. So keep that in mind. Um, however, uh, I, during my time abroad, got two different concussions, um, which was something that I had never had happen before. And it was, honestly, it was really scary, but I felt so supported by CYA and by SAID. Um, and I just felt like everyone was working together for me. Um, the CYA program, because it is so small, uh, is really beneficial in circumstances like that, um, because I had like, administration members and professors like actually taking care of me um which was so incredible and so totally beyond what they needed to do um everyone just went above and beyond and the doctors uh was really accessible um the doctor gave me his number and I had him on call like during the entire time of my recovery which is just so greek of him mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I also got an eye infection from a turkish bath which, um, you know, things happen and it was so easily accessible. Um, and CYA put me in contact with really wonderful local doctors. The, the healthcare system in Greece is honestly pretty private. Um, a lot of the places that I ended up going were just like an individual office of like a lovely old Greek woman or Greek man who was able to help. Um, so overall for scary things happening, it was not as scary as it could have been nearly just because of how wonderful everyone was. And, how accessible healthcare is in Greece. Um, and speaking to the safety of just the general city, Athens is a pretty busy city. And uh, there definitely are some more sketchy areas and some really nice areas. And CYA does a wonderful job of educating people. 
And um, one thing that I will say made me feel so safe is that the taxi system is totally privatized in Greece. Um, and so you cannot get into a random taxi. You have to use an app called Taxi Beat, which tracks you and sends your location to someone else. So that made me feel so safe. And that even though I, you try to avoid traveling by yourself, especially at night, uh, it really is like a safety net. So I never once felt unsafe. We left the last question to be kind of open-ended. Everybody could um, add something that they just wanted to make sure their most favorite thing or, or whatever, what they're most proud of, but we need to be really quick so we have time for questions. So um, PD goes first this time. Oh, so, um, yeah, we didn't get to you, did we? No, sorry, let me get Eva's um, health and safety. <laughs> I can be quick, um, but yeah, my program, it was just like in the midst of COVID. So we got um, relocated a few times which actually ended up being an amazing experience because um, I got to spend a month in Tanzania and then a month in Kenya. And then by the second relocation, me and my friend just decided to travel on our own. So we got to go to Egypt. So that was fun. I mean, I feel like when you study abroad, you kind of just take on the risk of like maybe getting COVID and like possible shut lockdowns and stuff. So if you're just open to that and just seeing where um yeah your adventure takes you I feel like you um and like what other people said about ha having basic common sense for safety um but yeah it was a didn't feel unsafe at all thank you sorry to have skipped you now to your crowning moment or whatever you want to share with the group really quickly yeah um I just wanted to talk about the biggest thing that I got out of study abroad. I definitely, you know, I'm a foreign languages major. I obviously learned a lot and my language skills improved, but I think the the most important thing to me was that I became more independent and, and I learned to be okay on my own in a new country. I definitely made friends, um, but I also explored a lot on my own and I traveled all around Spain on some solo trips. Um, and this really got me excited to pursue a master's degree in Italy after graduation. Um, and I plan to move there totally on my own. And on, I just, I don't think I would have been as eager and confident um, to pursue an entire degree, an entire degree abroad and like move to a new country on my own if I, if I hadn't studied abroad during undergrad. Okay. Thanks. Okay, for me, um, <clears throat> the thing that I'm most proud of is probably my ability to learn Greek uh, because obviously everyone wants to travel to other countries especially if you're in Europe everything is pretty accessible and I did that pretty well but um, Greece has such like an extensive landscape that I never really knew as like a, an American tourist and I really feel like I got to have the Greek view of Greece which is something that is not very often afforded uh, and the one thing that I wish I knew beforehand was I wish I would have researched better the um, like where to get household items and just basic things like toothbrushes and 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 hair brushes and all that because we don't they don't have things like Target in Greece and it's a lot more difficult to just get like random things as they pop up in necessity. Uh, so that was definitely something that I wish I would have looked into more. Um, I think the thing I'm most proud of is like planning all the trips that I did. I made nine trips throughout my entire like four months in Barcelona. And like the first month I just spent exploring like Barcelona, like not only the city, but like the region. So like going to places like Sitges, Tosa de Mar, like all these different places and then traveling throughout Europe. So definitely like using my time really well and efficiently. Um, when me and my friend were in Egypt, we um, got scuba certified and my research project was like um, doing like marine ecology. And um, so that kind of triggered, um, that gave me an idea for thesis, which I've written about. And also um, I'm excited to like travel and free dive in other places. So I think that was an amazing part of my study abroad experience. I think everyone said really good things. So um, I think one thing um, that I guess like a piece of advice that I could give myself was um, just like Alexis was saying, I think it, it um, 
I kind of wish that I had spent more time in my host country, like uh, at different in different cities, because I was in the capital. So I think that I didn't. I only took like one day trip to a different part of the country. So I would say like um, try to like familiarize yourself with the country you're going to, um, and just know that there's so much to see everywhere. Even cities that you might not like know the name before you go. There's just so much to do. So. Um, I just left feeling like I still had so much to see, which is a nice thing because it, it, I know that I want to go back. So yeah, that's just one thing. So I, I see questions in the, in the chat that I'll answer um, pretty quickly. It's somehow direct to students, but um, generally there's a question about, do students go to a country that they studied the language from? Um, that's one of your options. You can go to English speaking locations and some places have courses taught in English. Scripps does have a language requirement for certain languages. If we teach them here in the Claremont colleges, that if you go to that country, you would have a background in that language and it varies by um, the language. Um, in terms of the cost, uh, someone asked about the cost. Everyone pays the same to Scripps. You pay for your your semester tuition room and board to make this possible to make financial aid um, available to everyone equally and to make the options available across the board. So you pay the same. Um, there are some ex extra expenses that students mentioned about certain things and we, help, we can help with a few of those, but some of those are things you do need to budget for and that's important. Um, the, Someone asked about STEM majors um, having a research component. There are programs where you can do field research. It's built into the program. Um, if you want to go to a university and do research with a faculty member, that could be a little bit trickier, but if you're eager to put yourself out there and, and get tips from people to do that, that is certainly possible. Um, asking about housing, most programs have their own housing and they would prefer that you live in their housing, you can choose to do independent housing, but you kind of, everybody kind of takes hands off and it's like you're on your own. So um, someone mentioned living with a family member or family friend. Um, I would advise against that in most cases, but if that's something you want to do, you can pursue that option. Um, you would be signing off saying, I understand I have to do all of this on my own, but if you have connections there, it might be workable. Um, previous students have mentioned, though, they regretted it because they were often far from the rest of the students on the program, so that made it difficult to get together with other people, and, and they had their own separate taxi they would have to take off or whatever, so um, it depends on the program, though. Some have very strict policies about their housing, but Scripps would support you if the program allowed it. Um, there, there's an asking, they're asking about um, majors that don't see anything right now that stands out as uh, appropriate. You can petition for other programs. You can petition to go abroad in second semester sophomore year. Most people go as juniors. A lot of these students went as seniors because they couldn't go in their junior year due to COVID. Um, but generally, usually most people abroad are juniors. Um, you could go as a first semester senior, but that depends on your um, major and the department and your thesis requirements. So if they can work it out, we can help make it happen, but it's definitely up to the department. Um, and then most people go on already approved programs. If you go on an unapproved program, the main thing is you need to do a lot of research. The approved programs are not any more special than anything else out there. We just have a lot of experience with them. We can tell you the good and the bad, what the challenges are, what feedback we've gotten from previous students. So we have a lot more information about those. If you pick an unapproved program, you would need to do some of that research yourself. We would also help with that and check it out ourselves. Um, but there's some criteria that have to be met, et cetera. But um, we have people petition for unapproved programs. And Alexis' pro program was not an approved program that she petitioned for. And that it, we want to make it happen. So if it's all safe and everything lines up and you can get the credit, um, that's not, we don't mean it to be a hindrance to petition. It's just that you need to do a little bit of your own work about it. And who can study abroad? Everybody can study abroad. <laughs> Everybody at Scripps can study abroad. Um, it's an option that we're here to help you with. Um, 
throughout the process. So if there aren't any other questions, I'll let some people throw in some more comments if they want, or Jossie, do you have a plan or anything different that needs to happen? Yeah, so before we wrap up, um, I'd just like to ask current students to pop in the chat your email address if you're comfortable. That way admitted students can contact you directly if they have any questions. Um, thank you to our panelists uh, for sharing your experiences and thank you to our admitted students for all your questions. Um, does anyone have anything that you wanna share? Any advice um, for figuring out which programs to, to apply for or to think about before you study abroad? Just jump in. <laughs> um, I would definitely recommend studying abroad in general. Um, even during COVID when there were some hiccups, I'm really glad that I went abroad and I definitely would recommend it to anyone. Um, with regard to finding a specific program, my advice would be to talk to previous students who did a specific program and get their opinion on things. We actually require that you that you interview someone who did the program you're looking into. That's the best resource you have. These wonderful people. Um, we encourage everyone to talk to return students. Yeah, and I also recommend really coordinating with your advisor um, all the things that you need to fulfill before you leave and after you leave. I think especially as a first semester senior, like my advisor was really integral to like getting approval for doing my thesis at a different time and like all the G's I had to complete and things like that. So your advisor is also another really important um, resource. I do have one question for you, Neva. Um, if students want to learn more, whether that's reaching out to you directly or seeing the types of um, different programs that we offer, how can they learn more about study abroad? Um, well, we have a, a website that's accessible to the public. Um, it's We have an external website and a, an interior website. And the external site has more like promotional, cool pictures, et cetera. But the internal site has, um, is available to people for most of it. A few of the options you have to log in and have a scripts login for, but you can find out a lot of details. It's that, there you go. Well, no, that's the outside one um, that Jossie just put up in the um, site. The other one is sage.scriptscollege.edu. And so that one gets you to some more detail. Um, you're welcome to contact us, sage at scriptscollege.edu is our email address, and we're happy to respond, and, and um, we can make an appointment and talk about your particular interest and what you want to know about it as you're making your decision to hopefully come to Scripps. Um, but yes, we're happy to talk to everyone. Thanks, Neva, and thank you again to all our panelists. Um, we are at time, so I just want to say congratulations to our admitted students, and we hope to see you soon at one of our upcoming events. Thank you all. Bye.